eight night games. Yeah, I mean, you started to mention some of what he said, but I think, um, I mean, the biggest thing was easily what he had to say about late night games. I mean, what did we talk about all day yesterday? A stupid yeah. time slot, right? A stupid mm -hmm. Pac-12 time slot where I just said, okay, if the okay, we had John Wilner and Stuart Mandel, I think both had pieces yesterday, um, or have had pieces here as of late talking about this this time slot that the Pac-12 has that is so valuable. This late night on Saturdays where they basically go unopposed across the country. And, you know, we've seen the, the graphics put out. Washington State's had, like, 7 million-plus games. And, like, I, I don't know, I'd assume, like, five of those are at 930 at night, right? Um, so there's an advantage there. And we are even being told when it looked like there's really not a lot of mojo or momentum for the Pac-12 that this was their saving grace, right? Was this yep. late-night time slot on Saturdays? As the last 48 hours was being trumped up like their big wild card. Well, this is the biggest story of the day, easily. He's not Kevin Warren saying they're still open to expansion. Kevin Warren highlights late-night time slot as what the Big Ten will now be able to regularly play in because they've got USC and UCLA. So that's interesting for a multitude of reasons. Uh, one, those schools hate that late-night time slot, but get used to it because you're going to be playing in it on a regular freaking basis because they're not going to have Indiana Rutgers you know, starting at like midnight on the East Coast. That's just not going to happen, so... USC, UCLA, um, you got greener surroundings, you got more green in your bank account, but your late-night time slots, those are going to maybe be more regular they're, than they ever were before. They're going to have 7 p.m. kicks, I would say, you know, uh, especially for their for their big games, um, for some of their, like, middle-of-the-road games, like, not necessarily like USC and Ohio State will be, you know, a normal kick time. But let's say USC and Wisconsin – USC and Nebraska, that that sounds to me UCLA, UCLA and and Maryland, that sounds to me like a nine. Why would Ohio to, State not be a part of that? Well, I mean, uh, well, because you're going to want them in a higher rated time slot. I'm going to throw them at nine thirty. You're going to nine thirty on there on on the they're in the here's, Eastern see, time here, zone. And here's one of the problems though with why why would they get why do I understand you put them where you get the most eyeballs, but. If other teams are going to have to travel East Coast or whatever to the West Coast and play a 7 o'clock Pacific Coast game, it shouldn't just because you suck. No. It shouldn't. It should all, everybody should at some point have to play a game on the West Coast. Yeah, and I'm sure that they will, but it's got to make sense. You don't just throw them out there late night on the West Coast just because everybody else is doing it. If you're going to do it, it's got to make sense to do it. So you'd be calculated in doing it. So it would be USC, Ohio State, late night West Coast, but – You'd probably have it set up where it's like in the middle or later part of the season, or maybe you're like, no, let's get it out there early because it's, you know, uh, it's going to be, you know, two teams with relatively fresh records so we can hype it up more. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, they'll definitely have to do it at some point, but again, there's only so many slots. Like it's one game a week. It's not like there's five games going on so you can spread it all out, but so yesterday we heard, so here's my point is yesterday we heard all about this Pac-12 time slot. Well, Kevin Warren just stomped all over your time slot and just said they're going to take that now or they're going to run up against it. So the days of Washington State pulling a million because they're the only game in town, and I don't mean to single them out. It's just, you know, insert team there. Um, that's probably over with because now they're going to be going up against some sort of a Big Ten game. And we don't know what the Big 12 might do in a couple of years with their TV deal either because in theory, if they expand, they could also play those late games, which was my whole thing, was why are they making such a big deal out of one stinking time slot when, the, in theory, the Big 12 could just go add three more teams, pair them with BYU, and boom, you've got a full season of that same time slot, plus all your other teams, and I just don't see how that wouldn't be more appealing. So I, was, I just thought that was shoddy reasoning for why that was somehow a strength. So if I could kind of pierce through that with this Big 12 idea, this just stomps all over it. I mean, this stomps all over it being this, this big position of strength for them. But what Kevin Warren, all, I mean, he said multiple things. He also said that basically now they're going to be on TV all day long. Every single time slot you look at, you're going to have a Big 10 game because of the number of teams they have, the fact they go East Coast to West Coast. Now, I don't think that's surprising because why else would you be doing all of this, really, going mm -hmm. all the way to the West Coast if you weren't planning on having these late-night games? But, yeah, he basically confirmed – They'll have those late night games, and they're going to go from, you know, sun up to sun down, pretty much, uh, with Big Ten games all day. Also mentioned that their contracts are not quite done yet, uh, but he mentioned having multiple partners. Uh, obviously, there's the Fox. Um, who else is that? The Fox and, um, uh, gosh, there's somebody else that he mentioned. Uh, Big Ten Network. 
uh, which are, I guess are to, to paired together, but they'll have that uh, traditional, you know, outlet that they've had. But he also mentioned having multiple unnamed media partners that, you know, have not been announced just yet. So that's important to know if you're a Big 12 or a Pac-12 fan because, well, one, the late night time slot's not all to yourself now. But two, who's actually got room for games? If Big Ten's running all day long, they can, in theory, soak up like two or three networks right. with, with multiple slots. Same thing with the SEC once they add Oklahoma and Texas. So that begs the question of, all right, what does the Big Ten actually sign? With who? How many networks? How many games? How many slots every Saturday, Friday night, what have you? And is Notre Dame a part of this? Because that, that's even more real estate that they would be taking up. And then you start to go, okay, what's left over now? And I don't know if you, how you want to look at this, if it's good news, bad news, but I would much prefer, and I know Pac-12 fans will say I'm a homer here, but I would much prefer having a couple years to figure it out versus having to figure it out right now as the Big Ten's also figuring it out and basically taking whatever they want to. Well, and that's, that's what I said a couple weeks ago when people said, well, the advantage is their TV deal's up right now and they can negotiate it right now. Like, no, I think that's pretty bad because... Look, I, I'll tell you this. I was in a, I told you guys, I was in that timeshare meeting yesterday. The problem, biggest problem I had with it was he didn't want me to like take a minute and think about my options. It was like, buy a timeshare now or don't. And not that I would have, but that was the, the thing was like, well, I can't think about this large financial purchase for more than two minutes after you've <laughs> give, given me the spiel. Same thing with the Pac-12. Like, wouldn't you want to be able to have some time to, like, really, if you're a university, think, is this the best place for us for the next five, seven, ten years? Or would you rather have the time to go, all right, we've got 18 months, two years to do this and figure out what the trajectory of our league is going to be? I think right now that's better because you don't wake up in the morning going, well, I don't like this offer. And plus, um, you know, you can put a 30-day negotiating window in, like they did, but at the end of that 30 days... That's August, what, 10th? That's or August 4th. Yeah, 4th. And so once that's over, you know, are you kind of now at the point where... How do you do a TV deal when you don't even know who's going to be in your conference? Exactly. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> How do you do a TV deal when you don't know who's going to be in your conference and the fact that there's basically two teams holding that conference together, right? Mm -hmm. There's two teams still holding that thing together. Oregon and Washington, right? Mm-hmm. So if the Big Ten says today that they don't plan on stopping expansion, they didn't say exactly what their plans are. Kevin Warren didn't reveal a timetable. He didn't say a final number on who they want or anything. But you can see that it's going to be problematic or much more difficult to go east because who are they going to get? There's no one available contractually right now. They'd have to wait over a decade, in theory, for the ACC teams that they would most likely want. So where else do you go? You probably are looking west. Let's bring it all the way back around to where we started with Oregon and Washington. If there's a chance that after they sign this massive TV deal, whatever that entails, that they're going to go expand again, sure, it could in theory be like some ACC team that somehow found a way out of a grant of rights or whatever. Um, but odds are it might be some more West Coast schools. So, and maybe not. Maybe they just give a call to Houston or something. I mean, rent, like who knows? But um, my point being... Oregon and Washington don't feel safe still. And they're not going to feel safe until the Big Ten finally says, hey, we're done expanding. And when is that day going to come? Well, not today and not probably in 2022 and probably not in the next couple of years because there's far too much dust left to settle. So if you're the Pac-12, how do you negotiate a TV deal when you don't even know who's going to be in it? And how do you also negotiate a TV deal when the two teams that are basically holding it together, what are they going to sign? If you're Oregon or Washington, what grant of rights are you signing? What what commitment think, are you I making? I don't think you could sign a grant of exactly. rights unless you know uh, you you. There's a lot. They well, that's why there's so much back going on right now. One exactly. of the things that the, the Big Ten can do, and we have to take a break for our first guest in Pat Smith out of Birmingham. One of the things the Big Ten can do with what they basically said was is what the NFL has done to college football, who wasted away the Saturdays and the weekends mid to late December. The Big Ten then could go in and go, oh, you really don't care about these weekends yep. or these nights or these time slots? We will take that. All right, when we